Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and oh my gosh, <laughs> we are hitting levels of Bendis that shouldn't even be possible. I just finished reading Invincible Iron Man number 600. It is Bendis's, as he says at the, at the end here, this is his last Marvel comic, and he absolutely did save the worst for last. This is the worst thing I've ever read by him. It quite possibly is the worst comic ever made. I know I've said that before, but then, you know, something was worse than that. Um, definitely the worst Marvel comic I've ever read. And yes, this includes stuff like Squirrel Girl. I just... <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's just start off with the uh, cover, which shows five or six random Iron Man suits with just random characters making blank expressions. Hey, do you remember this girl with the blank expression? Oh, that's Pepper Potts. And here's creepy smile. What the hell's going on? How is this? This isn't even the variant cover. Like, this is the cover for issue 600. <laughs> and bed, this is, oh, God. So we start off right here and we see this. And it is uh, Bendis' shtick, an op <coughs> opening monologue. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 dialogue balloons on one page. And then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 dialogue balloons on one page. And then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 dialogue boxes. Um, I would have sworn that I read the last issue. Uh, but it seems like I missed one because then Tony Stark, uh, he just came back because he had done some experiments on himself and just by, they even say by coincidence, basically by coincidence. Uh, untested, unproven, undocumented science, very frowned upon, but it seems just this one time it saved his life. Like, man, this is literally admitting his writing is absolutely terrible. So by coincidence, all the experiments, uh, uh, Stark, you know, an engineer, had done on his own DNA, which would not be something an engineer would do. That would be some kind of geneticist. Um, his body re rebooted instead of failing, hence the momentary lack of hair. And now he's on the mend. And then he has a plan to, he goes, oh, I just brought myself back to life. Maybe I can also bring my uh, friend back to life who's been uh, dead for a long time. Excuse me, I have a question. You just said that the way that you brought back can only be done once, by the way, amazingly terrible writing. And it was because of experiments you did on yourself. He's never had these experiments. But guess what? Guess what? He just had to love the science. He, he put a thing on another thing. On, you know, a, a table that you put... What, this is the table you get at Walmart. And you put the chips and dip on it, you know, when you go... And then, uh, hey, he brought back his friend. His friend's alive. Yay! Nothing matters. Literally nothing matters. Writing is just... There's, there's, no, there's no standard to writing. There's no goal. You just do things. I'm sad that James Rhodes has died. What if he was alive -y again? How would I do that? I don't know montage and then yeah this is the actual dialogue um um did you do something weird and shave us to do it look at his expression sorta you feel okay i'm very confused are you feeling anything zombie like what does feeling zombie like feel like a sudden craving for brains okay here's the deal he brings him back alive and he's like, I was literally in heaven. No, no, no. I was in heaven. You brought me back. And now I'm the soul is being separated from my soul. Like you could have done a whole cool story like that. Then they just do this cutesy pie. God. Friday, AI override command sequence terminated. Code word, Mazinger Z. Infinity killed Sue Dibney. Why don't you just like jerk yourself off Bendis and like take pictures and just email it to all of us. Like, that would be more subtle. So then they hug because of Wendy's. Um, and then, God, this dialogue is so, 
You shaved my head to save me? Or you shaved my head because you thought it was funny? We're both hoping the hair comes back. Then the AI just pops out out of nowhere. What the actual hell? Again, this is a, this is an AI. I, I need my hair, Tony. I hear you. I can't go on without it. You literally just came back from the dead. The, also, black guys shave their head all the damn time. Like, come on. Um, I need my hair, Tony. Oh, look, it's already coming in. I can see it. Come on, lots to do today. Did I miss anything? Nothing. It just does this cutesy shit. And then we get oh, AI, Tony Stark. Okay, so the whole bit is, you know how they were making it look like AI Tony Stark was going to be a villain? Well, he decided not to be a villain because that would be a cliche. Yes, we're getting that made up about it. Every book or TV show about an AI, imagining a world with AI, has one of us go nuts or try to destroy man, or conquer man, or just in general, just get rid of man. And I was programmed by a human person who grew up in that culture. So I know it's a part of me because it's part of all of us. And that's kind of annoying because what am I, a cliche? Is that all I am, a bodiless cliche? And then I realized, ah, there's that ego. There is fuck you, Benda. Seriously, fuck you. Fuck off. Fucking leave. You got the goddamn money. What the hell is going on? It's not funny. You think you're being cute. You're always smirking in every goddamn picture I see of you. What is that stupid ass face? You look like a testicle. It's not funny. <laughs> There's this old reference of someone like trying to like get in, in uh, Billy Crystal's uh, face. And it, Howard Stern always used to roast him for it. And, he, and Billy says... It's not funny. It's not fun. It's not funny or it's not fun. Like, comics actually matter. Some of us actually care about comics. Some of us, if we were on, you know, a big deal anniversary uh, issue, would have tried our freaking hearts out. Hell, quit on five ninety nine and give it to Jim effing Zub. I mean, Jim Zub is like that far away from being a super talent boy, but he actually tries. You could have just been like... Hey, uh, this is me jerking myself off in the bathtub, and I'm handing it over to Jim Zub because he actually cares. So then we get to uh, see uh, uh, Riri Williams with a dead-eyed expression. I never saw that before. He goes, I'm what Tony Stark made me. That's it. And I was made to help this girl, Riri Williams. Look at that girl. She doesn't even know what she is capable of yet, genocide. Honestly, it's a pleasure to watch, especially now, especially since she is just beginning to take her reins of her life. Okay, so I said this before, I'll say it again. Bendis has adopted some black kids. That's off the table. I'm just mentioning this as a fact of his life. You don't have to talk about black people as if they're very well-trained poodles who didn't piddle on the carpet. Like... Why do your white characters always talk about Riri in this demeaning, uh, I know she's a child, but you keep saying she's a genius. They don't talk, nobody talks like that, except for about Riri. Um, she's looking past her influences, past her admiration for Stark and Iron Man. Excuse me, I've read the story. She doesn't admire Tony Stark or Iron Man. She begged almost forced her like second grade teacher to tol tell her please discriminate against me this has been documented her teacher randomly picked tony stark and said you can't be tony stark and that was her origin she doesn't admire tony stark she hates him um so something yeah okay so so here's leonardo wait leonardo da vinci and he's from uh I can't remember if he's the good guy or the bad guy from S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, with Jonathan Hickman. By the way, I just got issue 5 of volume 2, except for they don't tell you that. Whatever. Um, uh, so then we get to see the LOL So Random Eyes. The real Leonardo da Vinci? The one you read about? The one born April 15th, 1452 in Anciano, Italy? There, that's, that's a characterization. It's just, it's knocking it out of the park, Bendis. Um, so then he basically says, you love the science and I'm saving the world. Just this dialogue goes on effing forever. So then, <sighs> Blade works for Leonardo da Vinci. 
Look at the screen. I'm just... This, this is how I'm expressing myself with these hand movements. I, I don't know what the hell is going on. He's, he's been gone for most of the time. He's been popular since the movies 20 years ago. Bendis has used him as a delivery boy twice. And now, guess what? The baddest ass black superhero in the Marvel Universe is doing. He's training random Waldos MMA. That's right. Oh, and then he kicks uh, Riri in her armor and knocks her down. And uh, she realizes she learned, has learned to fight. And then we get Miles Morales just popping out of goddamned nowhere just so him and Riri can meet in a Bendis book. Dude, where's your Spider-Man costume? What is this? What are you doing here? Who else is being recruited? Is that a vampire? And that's really supposed to be Leonardo da Vinci? Are they all fuck it? Fuck you, Ben. Just like, seriously, fuck off. So then... Oh, this is going to be a long video. Ah. <sighs> okay, so then we meet his mom. So, um... Bendis had to create a storyline where Tony and... What is it? Martha Stark? Maria Stark? They're not Tony Stark or Tony Stark. What, what is, what's Tony Stark's father's name? The, the one from the movies. That's not his dad. Uh, he's actually adopted. Yeah, he looks exactly like his dad. And yeah, he's the exact genius of his dad. But he's just a random kid who just happened to look exactly like his adopted father. That's not bad writing. Oh, and then his mom is... A uh, uh, super cool musician. And mind you, this is an AI computer program describing her. You're saying, Amanda Armstrong. I know that name. Yeah, you do. She was the fiercest of the rock goddesses back in her day. She had a few hits that spoke real human truth and rage. She, in my opinion, breathes the rarefied air of an elder statesman rocker who never jumped a shark, never went on a reality show, embarrassed herself in public, or sold her song to the soundtrack of a stupid movie. So she really, she never really went out of style. She just remained cool. She never ever did anything to compromise herself or her art, and that is so rare. And then we find out she was a shield. Like, this is the worst. So then um, we get this horrible, uh, so she, she uh, met a guy who turned out to be a hydrant agent, and then when she was pregnant with Tony, she found out he was a hydrogen agent, and she sliced his throat to murder him. I guess shield assassins, shield agents are all assassins. Don't arrest him. And, you know, don't don't. You know, he goes to jail for five, ten, fifteen years, and you know, uh, meets his uh, son. Just straight up murder him because you heard he was in Hydra. So then he, uh, God. I remember I was worried for a second, after I killed you, that I was going to have to marry two more backstabbing assholes who lied to me with their every breath. In your place. And then he does finger guns at her. Oh, shit. So then we get this old, gross lady. This thing that goes on effing forever. You are very judgy. Yeah, that's what a 70-year-old ex-hydra... That's... It. God, then we get this shit storyline with the hood... Uh, they're gonna. De I'm not. I'm not even gonna describe it. It's trash. So then, uh, a million Iron Man show up. Yay! And uh, then we switch artists every two pages. The hell. And then Iron Man's like, seriously, Victor, what are you doing? You're alive. Yeah. What is going on with all these? This is ridiculous. This whole this is like the worst shit book. I've, like, look at this storytelling. You can't even tell what the f is going on. Tony Stark's back alive and he's quipping jokes. He missed his frenzy, so we brought him back to life. Oh, uh, and um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, hired Blade to uh, be his delivery guy, and he, he recruited Riri Williams and uh, Tony Ho for, for S.H.I.E.L.D. This isn't a book. This is goddamn Mad Libs. Uh, so then something with Doctor Doom and the the hood is really somebody else... Maybe his mom. Okay, so then uh, Kurt Russell and Tony's groupie mom. And then uh, here comes Mary Jane Watson, not Parker, with a gun. 
whoa, you go, girl. So um, then uh, he says, wait, I know you. And she shoots him. And then she smiles. What is that smile? Are you an effing psychopath? You like that? Your son gave it to me in case anyone started any. And he's like, I brought backup. And then all of Hydra pops out of this thing that's right above them. And then she goes, I love the science and I brought backup too. And then all these superheroes appear out of nowhere a second later. This is the worst writing I've ever seen. So Riri goes, wow, look at all this. And then Tony Ho says, you're such a nerd, Riri. I love it. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, frick. Cable is just randomly there. Oh, and let's just put Blade way over on the edge. So then Kurt Russell tries to shoot him. And then, uh, then Tony Stark's back. And he's like, uh, it's your father. He goes, he's been alive the entire time? Yep. And this is like, uh, what the hell is going on? He's, it's just this cutesy talk. So he's talking to Riri, of course, looks like a boy, has a boy's body. I mean, you do know that women and men are different. Like, even their spines bend in different places. But, yeah, just make man-shaped body armor. Why not? So Riri says, he has an actual big plan for the future. Future? I'm in. The Ninja Turtle or the real guy? <laughs> so then I love this when the freaking champions just show up out of nowhere with no dialogue. Yay, we heard the science was happening over here when we love it. Uh, so then uh, this trap of Dr. Doom, everything collapsed. And then Tony Smugly, or Tony AI basically says, Oh, I just, humanity's a shit show and I'm not going to take over. I'm just going to sit here and laugh at it the hell and then we go to the future and the big reveal is Tony Stark is the Sorcerer Supreme but they already did that in the the annual or what it, what was it Legacy whatever that shit show was where they brought back the old female Captain Marvel and then the new not female one Do you remember that one eh. okay yeah nothing matters uh, so yeah that's it and then uh, he shows a bunch of uh, random pictures from uh, working at Marvel. He really does look like a testicle. Tell me that doesn't look like a testicle came to life. Just hanging around. Look, look at these. Doesn't that look like it should be hanging? <laughs> anyway, uh, Brian Michael Bendis sucks. Uh, he's done as much damage as he can at Marvel. Now he's noping out to DC where he's already screwing up. Just quit, man. Just quit. Let's quit. Walk off into the sunset. You had some good stories about 15 years ago. You are a complete and utter joke now. So anyway, uh, this... <laughs> I actually skipped over like half of this. I couldn't take it. There's The, the dialogue is just... Should I go back and do any of like these... Uh, the way that they talk is just... God, this is so annoying. So this is uh, Rhodey who just came back to life. Mind you, in the world that he's from... He's been dead but for like six months. But Tony just magically brought him uh, back to life with the science. So he hasn't checked in with his bosses, the Pentagon. And he's been gone for six months. So he goes, Pentagon, sit Rome. This is Colonel James Rose. Password, Galactus flavored Rocky Road. That's, that's, not, that's not how that works. No. And he goes, yes, hi. Colonel, yes, I am alive. Thank you, sir. And they, they just believe him. That's it. And then uh, uh, Tony Stark is supposed to be about, I don't know, 46, 48 years old. She goes, uh, she basically says, oh, that's your father. And he goes, that's really my for real dad? Yeah, that's how 48-year-olds talk. Um, so, I don't know, he's probably about, eh, 45. That's probably how old he's supposed to be in, in continuity. So, yeah, this is absolutely awful. It was a, a freaking back alley abortion of a comic. Anyway. Uh, sorry. I feel like apologizing to you guys. Sorry. Sorry I made this video. Uh, I'm sure it was even worse for you to watch it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving the super chat and the Patreon and the Indiegogo. We just hit $321,000. It's 
destroying the competition, hurting their feelings, going up to their wifey and looking at them and then back a wifey and saying, is this too bothering you? That's basically what we're doing to the industry. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll have uh, more. I, oh yeah, I went to the new comic shop. I got like 12 comics. A lot of good stuff, a lot of cringe. I still can't find Domino 2 or Batman White Knight 8, so I'm probably going to have to go to another comic shop for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.